Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome one and all to our session today brought to you by Help University, the University of Achievers. The talk today is on environmentology. And you're going to find out something new. You're going to find out something new about what it's all about. To find out more, I'm going to turn it over to our Master of Ceremony today, Mr. Gerard Benedict. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my name is Gerard Benedict. Kung Si Fa Chai, I hope you all can hear me. All right. In here. All right. So since then, I've been fascinated by his theories that are always linked to science, meaning Germancy linked to science. And he's come up with new steps, new ways of uh, uh, calibrating Germancy or Feng Shui. And now it's called in environology. But all these things will be given to you in detail by Master David Ko. So just as I was mesmerized by him 23 years ago, I believe you will also be mesmerized by what he has to share today. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I hand you over to Professor Master David Cole. Professor? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you, all of you, a very happy, very healthy and prosperous Year of Tiger in 2022. Today, I will be talking on two topics. One is I'll be talking about the outlook of the year 2022, the year of Tiger. Uh, that will take about 40 minutes, plus minutes. And then the second part, I will be introducing the environmentology, the four steps, uh, the one that I've, I've invented or reinvented. So let's start with uh, then, sorry, then the last part will be that if there are enough time left, we will then do Q&A from, from all of you. Now let me get started with the year 2022 outlook. And let me, let me touch my screen first. I'm okay. okay, outlook the year 2022. See, when we talk about prediction, there's a lot of issue. One is how far can we predict? The world is round, and therefore, because it's round, we are not expected to see too far away. The screen does seem to be moving. Okay. The first, oops, what's, what's happening? I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm new to this sort of gadget. Because of COVID-19, I cannot be in front of you. And the further we want to predict, the less certain it becomes. Maybe, maybe Malaysia can do better. Why? Because we, in our Kaji Georgia, we used to say, hujan di sana sini. We are correct. And sometimes they say hujan di satu dua tempat. We are also correct. So by that, by so by so saying, I think Malaysia's kaji cuaca is one of the world best. What all the experts, all the years have been talking and having the soothsayer, what they call predict or what they wanted to predict, were well, okay until twenty. 19. When the COVID-19 came in, all their predictions turned upside down. And here I am, we do it again. 
But once COVID-19 gets started, then the US start finding scapegoats, or pointing fingers and say, well, Wuhan, China was where it got started. And then easily start blaming that uh, the 5G handphone was the culprit of all, of all the culprits. But until today, there is no proof or there is no answer to who and to where this COVID-19 has actually started. So based on Chinese epidemics research on the record of the history, it is always mentioned that nature is the main, main cause. Why? Because they say well, after a period of weather, bad weather it means rain, flood, or very, very cold, or fire, that will, the subsequent year you will expect these bacteria or these viruses will all of a sudden all been dormant for so many years, so many hundreds of years, maybe they become alive. And maybe on the record, you also find that if after the war, after the war, the, 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 the people, the, the, the sort of sickness will reappear again. So I check history and I found some record. In the last 1,000 years, there were more than 100 occurrences of pandemics that took lives per the millions. Example, I give you just a few. I have a record of a couple of hundreds, but anyway, let's have a few. Smallpox, for example, in 152080, there was severe frost in this in River Thames, and the frozen throughout Jan January, horses and carts can cross the frozen river. And the sea on, on Marseille was actually frozen that the cart can went through, and things like that. And subsequently, the following year, the pandemic came in. And in yeah, 1545, 1548, the Kokolizi epidemic started. It, it came more than five to 15 million people, 80% of the population were the casualties. And 1877 and 1977, we have small pop. To, I'm sure you still remember uh, in history at least that subsequently people in, inoculated with smallpox vaccine. There were 500 million cases. And of course, the bubonic plaque, which is caused by, they call it the, the rats, in 1855 to 1860, that was in the 19th century, England experienced a much colder winter than we have ever seen in the recent years. For many years, we saw snow and ice along very cold northerly and northeasterly winds. And then the, subsequently, the, the, the plaque came in. And of course, the Spanish flu that everybody knows, uh, why the Spanish flu was Spanish fly. Anyway, <laughs> it's just a joke. The climate average in 1917 to 1980 were the opposite with the extreme cold with heavy rain. In 1918 to 1920, mind you, there were no Wi Fi, there were no handphone, so we cannot blame 5G or whatever G was the cause of any pandemic. What about 2022 and beyond? What can we expect? You see, in 1928, the weather was already above average. In 20, 2019, in December in that year, is there was a, the, the, red, the, red, the red epidemic started, and then the bad carried coronavirus. It all started like that. And then in 2020, which we all know in Malaysia, the nineteen the COVID nineteen mutates and it become Delta and the Delta turn worse and become the, become A and B and C and whatever and now up to twenty twenty one we can see that the Earth has got the three warmest June in, on record and the warmest ever the summer extremes of the extreme floods we have fire we have heat it is all in one year. This is not, oh, this year is very cold and the whole year cold. No, it is not. It's hot, it's cold, it's fire, it's flat. Even China has got a flood of, of worst over the last 30 years. And Malaysia, we also share part of it. We got the worst flood in 70 years, where you still remember a lot of people still homeless until today. New York and New Jersey. Look at the pictures that we have downloaded from the internet. And then Europe and U US, for example, the flood after the storm Ida, for example. And then, of course, these are some of the pictures in New York. And these are 
the pictures taken in US, what are the area, the eastern area? Not only you got you got you got flood, you got worst winter, winter storm ever they experienced. And China, of course, never had they had, they thought the previous year was bad, but 2021 was even worse. Now look at the pile of cars and look at the flood the flooding the country. And Europe also, not only just Europe, the whole of Europe plus Germany and France, everywhere else you will see the flood was terrible. It took buildings away, it takes lives away. And this is what happened in UK. And this is what happened in our own country, in Malaysia. And then you see that this Google came up with this map about along the equator that the, the, the typhoon was flowing in such a manner, which is abnormal, absolutely abnormal in physics terms. I will explain this later. And the snowstorm we know, snowstorm that we know in 2021, which is global, not only in America, so China, Japan, everywhere else. The, the, the winter storm in US alone apparently is swept across the country of for 2,000 miles from, from 2021 November onward. And they like, so the kids doesn't know, of course, they find it very interesting to play once in the means of what. And of course, globally, we have fire. On one hand, you got a lot of uh, cold weather, flood, and the other hand, you have a lot of fire, which is not nobody's business. And of course, if you look at a map of the drought, all the, the red ones are in very severe drought, and then some of them become orange color and yellow color. And the, the land get worse. The agriculture produced was very much affected. So when you say about this year, 2022, you have a lot of this, the things that you buy, whether it's fish or grains, were more expensive. Well, it's part and parcel of the deal. Now, this is what we have. The Chinese Prediction Center said that the temperature this summer will be hotter than normal and the precipitation amounts will lower than normal. This means that severe drought, which is already uh, regarding the West, will worsen in the coming weeks. But we are, we are Kaji Jaji expecting we have a heavy rain of, of, of four states over the next three weeks. Well, I, I don't want to continue reading to you all the problems that we are going to face in 2021. Uh, this is the worst in the past seven years. Anyway, look, that I was talking about the, the typhoon that sweep through, sweep over the equator, which is not normal. Because as the Earth turns, uh, the globe turns anti clockwise, the wind will blow clockwise. And this blowing at the equator point, as we can see the white, white line, the white arrow that I show, the typhoon normally blow in that manner. In the Pacific, it will then blow by up the Philippines and then go to Vietnam and then go to Hong Kong, go to Taiwan and China and then Japan. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it will then go the other way around. It went actually anti-clockwise. The Northern Hemisphere is clockwise. But just now, the picture that we show, it was not normal. I, I have been doubting this for months. So how come this happened? Because this typhoon don't cross equator. Because by natural physics term, as the Earth turn anti-clockwise, the wind go clockwise, they are split into two ways. They, can't, they cannot blow like that. I don't believe it. But anyway, if Google says so, I suppose it is so. And they blame it on Earth warming, so-called. And another report came in to say Mount Everest, the mountain's highest glacier have melted rapidly and they actually, about 5,000 glaciers could disappear drastically by the end of this, this year. So what does it mean then? It means that when this glacier melts, they go into the lake around Mount Everest and the lake will then over flooded and will go into, into, into all, the, all the rivers that the, 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 the Black feet, we then people are flooded. And the countries or the outbursts of this glacier lake will be Nepal, Pakistan, Bhutan, China. And this has happened over the past century, but this is going to get worse and worse. You see, in, when the glacier in the sea melted, you don't see much difference. But when it's on land they're going to see, then it's going to be very, very serious. So the map here shows that 
how Asia River rely on the Himalaya glacier to provide much of the water that feeds China, India, Vietnam, Laos, that the whole, most of the Southeast Asia. And these affect drinking water affecting about 1.5 billion people in nine countries. When these get flooded, a lot of other unexpected viruses and bacteria will appear again. And it also means that the sea water level will rise by 8 to 10 meters, not 8 to 10 inches. The lower land country, the sea level resulting of having less land. The agriculture produce will be decreased drastically and pests like locusts and other harmful virus bacteria will be more rampant in 2022, 2023. What does it, that mean? That means the dormant and the hibernating virus and bacteria will revive, such as COVID-19 and others, and more deadly. We have never had, had them before, and we, have, we do not know who they are, and we do not know what vaccine to handle them. When the sickness starts, and then we start developing the vaccine. To develop vaccine will take two, three years. By the time, how many million, billion people have died first? And that is only at the testing stage. So more measures have to be implemented. Of course, Europe will suffer badly. It will be beyond inflation. It will be beyond recession. And you possibly go into deflation that we have, we seldom encounter. What does it also mean? That result will, will mean famine. It will mean looting. It will mean corruption and will escalate. And the world will not be the same. Way of life and management will not be the same. Many countries and government will be bankrupt and be, possibly some will become failed states and collapse. And this could lead to chaos, this will lead to war. Pandemic is not going to go away for a while, not going away for 2022, not going away for 2023, and not going away for 2024. Virus and bacteria are waiting for right weather, for right environment to strike. Some strike it hot, some like it cold. I do not know who, who far they like, who they like. Some of, the, some of them come temporarily, some of them take a longer time. How temporarily? I don't know. One year, three years, five years or longer. During the temporary period, what are we going to do? Are we going to wait until it's over? Or are we going to restart our life or what? Possibly you can give me the answer. Or we're going to wait for a vaccine to work or what? We some this vaccine that we have from first vaccine to second vaccine to booster vaccine, and apparently Israel is proposing the fourth vaccine. So therefore, end up we will be our body is planted with all sorts of vaccine in our body, and any side effect happen, it just happened to be lost. COVID nineteen vaccine, we also know we have been reported that it will not last for three to six months. It means that every six months you got to pump yourself, pump in with another new vaccine. And then uh, uh, every year means to say you need two, two more vaccines every year. Every two years you need four more vaccines. So how many vaccines, how many types of vaccines? You know who will get richer? The people who produce vaccine, not you and me. And in 2022, the pigs that carry virus already happened. In the Malacca, they have already killed so many pigs. And the red carrying virus is coming soon. Why? Because Hong Kong already have the hamster uh, carrying virus. And of course, they have already overkill. They told the people, you better surrender your hamster or else when you get a COVID, uh, get this virus attack, we are not going to help you. And rabbit is, the, these are the, their family, uh, the, 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 the mouse and the hamster are the family. Like, like this. In 2023, I will show you why we predict this. That the H1N1, remember the chicken, the chicken uh, 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 pandemic that we had? We were not that bad, badly hit, badly affected, but Hong Kong was, China was. It's coming back in 2023. We cannot change the weather. We can only learn from history. We can only predict the weather better to prepare for the next pandemic. Then we might as well change our way of life. The world will change and our life will change. The faster we find the solution and the depth, we will survive. Or otherwise, you, you find the answer. 
Now, let me go through with you and, and the Chinese way of looking at it. The Chinese has got four or five different way of doing their prediction. One was the warring state written during 560 BC, which is 2,600, 600, 700 years ago, and written by two persons. Xiao Jing is a, a master and a student. I will show you later. And the other one in the Han Dynasty, about 280, he was mainly to warn people of the next year or year, future year's weather so that there will be different, different sicknesses attacking people. So they, they got to prepare their, their herbs, they got to prepare their medicine in early. When the outbreak comes, they will not be caught un, un, uh, un, unaware or un, not alarmed. And then they had, at the same time, during 280, there was another person, there was participant in the Han Dynasty. There's a guy called Bochi. This guy was actually uh, a, weather, a, a, a weatherman. So he find that this weather already come in cycle. And the bigger one maybe come in 10, 20,000, once in 10, 20,000. That there's a period of very, very hot, hot period for long period. And then there's a period of cold period for long period. But there is a smaller cycle which happened in once in every 60 years. So he recorded this. He, took a, he observed and recorded and he gave it to the emperor. The, em the first emperor looked at it and told him that is a total bullshit. Forget it. So he went home, started, continued his research. 20 years later, the emperor had changed to a new emperor. He submitted to the new emperor. The emperor believed him and said, okay, let's observe what you have said. And then if it's true, then we will let continue. And because of that, they, they observed it for 10 years and he was, he was correct. So from then on, the Chinese come up with a new gadget. They do a, a wooden cow or a, a earth clay cow in front of standing next to him. The way the cowboy is dressed and how the cow was, was, was uh, dressed Tells all the story. I will show you that just a short while later. And another one is called the pushback prediction. It was done, done during the Tang Dynasty, which I will also show you later. And you decide which one you think makes more sense, or you don't. You think all the four don't make sense, but it has been followed. For example, Zhao Qing has been with them for two thousand six hundred years. Han Dynasty, the Wu Yu Qi, has been used by Chinese medicine men to prepare medicine in advance. We the common people also do. We prepare our flu jet in advance for a year. So that when the jet comes, we don't get caught unaware. Why? Because all of a sudden, it comes with a new virus. But you must reinvent your vaccine again. So you prepare the vaccine. So they are not always right. Sometimes they get caught. So therefore, that year's flu become a very serious flu. But when they are right, then that year's flu will be easily handled. And of course, the, the pushback is another story I will show you later. Let's go through one by one. Okay? For example, the Han Dynasty talking about the weather. They talk about the year of Tiger 2022. I've been doing this for the last 15 years and I published in books. In 2022, it says that this year, the weather, I, I better show it in English, in the English version later. In this. I don't know how many of you can read Chinese. And in that, in, in the, uh, the cowboy, cowboy story, they also come up with a poem and say, this coming year, what should you take? Where, should the, where will the flood be? Where will the dry land be? What sort of crops you should plant? Uh, you should plant cotton or you should plant wheat because different, different crops plant at different ground. For example, you plant wheat, you need wet ground with low grade. If you want to plant wheat, you possibly go to the slopes. So therefore, in 2023, I all these are in, in Chinese. I have a little, little in, English translation. Okay, let's start with the cowboy. You notice anything funny with this cowboy? First, on the left top corner, there is a sun telling you that 2023 is going to be a hot year. But you look at the farmer, the farmer's leg is he did not wear shoes. What does it mean? It means that the land is flooded. So the year is a very fun year. On one hand, it's very hot weather, and the other hand, it's flooded. And then you can see the, 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 the paddy field. The paddy field is vacant. There was no paddy at all, not even grass. But 
The wheat is actually on the right hand corner. So therefore, he said, if you plant the wheat on the slope, you can have good harvest. And this is what the whole poem was mentioning about. Let me show you that the cowboy cowboy poem in English. I mean, this is literally translated. Uh, originally, my student used to rewrite it into English poem, but now I cannot. I just uh, the, the time this year we did not print any book. It says rainfall even, but it's erratic weather where the rainfall come at the wrong time. Uh, like what the, the sun and the barefooted cowboy, the way he's doing. Then he said, if early planting, you would have good harvest. Because supposedly in spring, you're not supposed to have heavy rain. Looks like spring is going to have heavy rain. He said, summer and autumn, very strong wind. So like, therefore, late planting or harvest well into late autumn. You got to, you can, one, you are either early planting before the rain, the, the flood comes, or you plant late after autumn. The late, the low land, early harvest, we have 80% harvest. Higher land harvest, you have 60% harvest. Wheat, oat, and other cereals should be planted more. Tea leaves will be less planting because you get lesser tea leaves, but the higher, the price is higher. Cotton will mean worm attack. Pardon my English because this is literal translation. Uh, you know, this cotton thing, they, they actually can make clothes and bring into silk and things like that. When, when they attack by, by worm, then therefore your harvest on cotton will be bad. So therefore, your income will be affected. So therefore, what do you do? He said, pray to God for good year. Now, in Fozil, on the other one, the, I about 2,600 years ago, the Chiao, Chiao Jing sort of prediction, he did it by 12 lines. You see that I, I put there with, with 12 lines of binary lines, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Of course, these are direct translation for the I Ching Kua. I Ching Kua only six lines. Chiao Jing did it on 12 lines. He, his prediction is worldwide, one, one 12 line a year, so the cycle is 4,096 years, A cycle. Then every year he give a cryptic 16 worded poem per year. I will show you some of, some of them later. I cannot show you all because I don't have much time here with you. But first of all, when we talk about prediction, we must look into a point of reference. Can we take Malaysia's point of reference? Certainly not. Do you remember Galileo Galilei said, uh, sun is the center of reference. He got himself in big trouble. He got even himself even, even under house arrest. So we find a new place. So we said Mount Everest being the highest uh, mountain in our world and is seated into one of the biggest landform, biggest landmass in the world. We decided to pick that as a point of reference. Unless you can show me another point. The biggest reference. We cannot follow England on the Greenwich point because that is that is only arbitrary. Uh, it's actually talking about the movement of the sun. Okay, with that as a as a point of reference from Himalaya, anything east of Himalaya is east, and then west of Himalaya is west. So the magic square here will show you a northeast southwest. What is the word written on top? One is actually not the word written on the on the south. On, uh, on nine is considered south, and the east is three, and the west is seven. So therefore, this you got to get used to this. Of course, to get you to remember all this is very difficult. My students after twenty years also got problem understanding this. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I will explain to you. On the left is the yearly trigram. Eight. Eight means that eight would stay there for twenty years. Therefore, from 1984, which is period seven, from 2004 is period eight, and 2024 will be period nine. So two years later, we will have we we'll walk, walk into period nine. This is once in 20 years. They stay there for 20 years, and then another one, which is a yearly movement, this on, on my far far right right hand corner, with the with the six the black six in the middle and the red five in the in the middle. That is a yearly affair. The five will be there is per permanent, and but the six keep running. This, for example, 2021 is six, 
2022 become five. The number keep going backward. And after the five being, being, being placed, the other number follow five, four, three, two, one, nine, six, if you, if you can. But uh, I think it's a bit difficult. I will explain as you go along, but I put the, the, the magic square, I keep on changing the magic square as the year go by. So the magic square for yearly, for example, 2021 is six, 2022 is five. The one on the left written as six, written on the right written as five. Anytime a number, wherever the number go, five go, that place or that territory or that, that, that sector will have sickness. We're talking about sickness, a very serious one, like epidemic. And of course, when the, when, 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 when the two hit any, any sector or two hit any countries, it means that the people, there will be a lot of death. Five is already worse, already bad. Two is even worse. And if you were the, the six or one or eight to reach your, your, your country or to reach a sector, that sector will be doing well financially and everything else. But when three and four reach that place, it is a different story. Three and four represent study, so the, the people will, will advance in their study. But when four and nine reach there, you expect war. And when seven reach there, you will expect fire. So just... Uh, Stupid comment, but I will explain to you as we go along. Okay. 2022, for example, you will see that you have a five in the middle, and what is on top there? It's one. Yes, it will then tell you war will start in north. The upheaval will be northwest. The south and southeast will recover faster. Recovering from 2021 is still ongoing. Now, this is from the 12 line uh, hexagram, double hexagram. The 16 characters was written there in, in, in Chinese character, but I tried to explain it in, in, in English translation, but you got to understand me, the translation is later. So here it says that continuing from 2021, help seems to be coming from somewhere in carriage towards east, probably goods, probably it's the help from Northeast. Now, if you take Himalaya as a point of reference, Northeast will be in China, Japan, Korea. Meet then when they come, they meet with heavy rain and perhaps with heavy flood and hence goods and aid cannot come in time. Instead of aircraft from Northwest, we used to transport goods and aid, but unfortunately, the birds, the word, the word they use is the bird, which is the aircraft fell to the ground and broken up or dismantled. The pilots and the people who tried to help felt so dejected and became helpless. So I can take this for a while, go to the toilet. If there's any questions, uh, please put it on the chat box right now, and uh, later, Master David will will come back to answer your questions. It's a short break. Gerard, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Hi. It's fascinating yeah. discussion presentation by Master David. So much you can learn. I can tell you that uh, 90 minutes is not going to be enough. Definitely, definitely, because there are so many aspects, and of course we. We really, really have to have a basic understanding of the hexagrams. So that's going to take a bit of time and effort on all our parts. And uh, these courses are meant to be to to go over a few months, actually, as we've okay. there, there's a There's a question by Vivian. She asked whether we can put up the previous slide. Could you change the, go back to the previous slide, please? Like, give me a second. Yeah, is this the one, Vivian? Okay. Okay. 
I'm just going to move away for now and uh, Master will take over again. Okay, Master, all okay. over to you. Okay. Thank you very much. And sorry, uh, when you get old, your bladder can't hold that much. <laughs> All right. So therefore, he says that, that the, the bad weather and heavy rain and flood from coming from north, north, north sector and north, north east sector, well, then you can see that this is affecting of the cold, hot and cold weather. Elsewhere, the weather are erat erratic. The southeast is strong wind with typhoon because the num I'm just reading from the number here. I just Number number from here, reading at the number and interpret out for you. So therefore, because of that, with the five in the middle, there will be the pandemic is getting worse and worse. As much as again, WHO said by after June, uh, pandemic will be better. And a lot of people say, oh, this uh, this one is uh, uh, better than many other years. Sorry, I look at the magic square from the reading here is getting worse, and the worst of them all is southwest. With the two there, the death is going to be our proportion. Okay. Country that were least, least affected, Southeast sector, um, Southeast Asia, Malaysia is very lucky for that. East sector, which is Thailand, Cambodia, that area, they are less, less affected. The death toll in the Southwest will be the worst. Other events that we can think of will be the West sector is financially in deep. The West here, because remember when we take Himalaya as a center, the West is anywhere from there, including the Middle East and all the way to the eastern part of America. The western part of America, all the way up to in um, up to Thailand, this is considered east. Because when the world is around, if you stand at Himalaya, uh, at more or less New York is just over the other side. So we're expecting earthquake and fire in South Sector. Here it will be referring to India and, and Sumatra. North East, North and Northwest will do well financially or benefited financially. Countries that will be least affected, I've just mentioned to you. Now, the 2022, we earlier mentioned about the peak uh, pandemic, we're talking about the mouse pandemic. But here, uh, I got to tell you a bit more because in the prediction in the Chinese period, they even went to the detail about what the what happened, where it happened, which part of the body attacked. He says here it's a stomach ailment. The stomach will bloat and become painful. Patients and malaria type of fever may not be malaria. We're talking about the skin pain, and the skin will be discolored from yellow to red. Skin have excess water retention. That means it bloat, body bloat. The, 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 the boil is an ulcer that causes bleeding. The origin of the sickness, it comes from lungs. Very sounds like what we have in, in COVID-19. Yes, apparently, you attack the lungs. But we shall, we shall see. But then we'll look a bit further to 2023. 2023, four go into the middle. Yeah. Then we have two on the east. That means... The, the, on the eastern sector, there are a lot of deaths. Northwestern sector, there's going to be a lot of sickness, which is Europe and Scandinavian area, plus including Russia. Maybe. So the areas that are slightly better are actually Southeast Asia, South and India and Indonesia and Malaysia. This area are doing, going to do well in 2023. But overall, with the four in the middle and with the five on the top and the two on the east, is then talking about there will be a recession and possibly a bubble burst, but the recovery will take more than three years. So therefore, the bad weather is a, is hot weather with the climate change. There will be shortage of food supply, rampant epidemic worldwide. East and Northwest will be badly hurt. South and Southwest will be doing well. Now with that, I just want to just, just tell, you, tell you, you people something that China is actually buying a lot of land from Vietnam and from Cambodia and came from Thailand and Burma, all this area. Why are they buying this land? I was told that they are, they are actually turning into agriculture land. They are planting food, food in pre preparation of, of food shortage. Are we, are we doing that preparation in Malaysia? I have told some of my 
uh, this, what you call uh, uh, what you call this uh, listed company who own a lot of land, uh, uh, this, uh, housing land, who, who cannot be developed. I said, why do we turn it into agriculture land? Don't need to change the land status, but just start. Your, your staff is there anyway. Your staff get a pay salary and they cannot build houses. Why don't we make them plant vegetables so that everybody can eat? Okay. In 2023, the 12 line uh, prediction says this. In the, in the 16 characters, it says, climb up the mountains in the south. It means the south center, south sector. Start, start in empty, de deserted mulberry land. On the left, a sand. On the right, a rock or stone of pebbles. The cow and horses have nothing to eat. So I reinterpreted it. This was written some 2,600 years ago. They don't have cars, they don't have planes, they don't have vehicles. So therefore, they don't use petrol. So I put in the bracket, say, maybe they are trying. All the agriculture land, the mulberry land, has got already turned into desert. And then on the left is the higher land, you actually have got rocks, and the lower land have already turned into sand. Now, what, what, if this happened to be true, it coincides with the earlier on mentioning about from the cowboy, these two actually coincide. Uh, they are saying the same thing. But let's see further. So therefore, with that in, with interpretation from there, we can say the recovery, uh, the recovery begins by second quarter of the year of 2023. It takes place sector by sector. The better organized country will fare better and the poorer states will take longer time, perhaps many, many years later. Top of the least of this country is peace, order, and unity. Why? Something is happening between them. Food supplies is most important. The search go on as far as South Mountain is a symbolic of actual mountain, or it's just talking about the script, or it's a cryptic saying Highland. But the description is real bad. I start searching Southern Hemisphere, where are the places I can find South Mountain, South Mountain there? I mean, if we're talking about India, uh, we don't have South Mountain in the South. If we talk about Malaysia, we don't have. If we talk about Indonesia, we don't have. So in uh, Australia we don't have. So therefore this is, a, a, well, it could be cryptic, it could be real mountain, I do not know. Okay. Now the interpretation of the event that it shows you something, that it is the, the, the land are so inhabitable, there's nothing to, you know, nothing to plant, I don't know, water, or it's too hot. Or maybe they have been psychological, this, uh, what they call, uh, mechanical warfare has been going on. We don't know. We, we go on later. Then we touch on the world politics for a while. You see, with the five in the middle and the eight for 20 years, we see what happened. Already happening now, that is Putin, Russia is talking about his argument with you, 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 what you call it, Ukraine. And Biden is actually turning fire to say yeah, any moment, any moment, Russia is going to attack, any moment going to attack. And Putin came and says, no, 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 we're not going to attack. And everywhere, the Europe and everywhere is so worried, they, just, they start in trouble. Why are they so worried? Because Russia supplies gas to the whole Europe. If they go to war, Russia will have cold winter. But of course, uh, Biden will be very happy if he start fanning fire and they start fighting. He would be, he would be the first one to laugh to the end. Anyway, UK to offer NATO major military deployment amid Russia's hostility. Why? Because Ukraine is not a member of NATO. So therefore, you, Ukraine can attack, NATO cannot have. So the current global thing also, the Egypt and US, they got into, got into argument again. It is US block billions of millions of, of dollars for Egypt, for, for Egypt over human rights. And then, China and America have never in good terms. 
on the official only they say yeah 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 we don't quarrel we cooperate but at the back they stab each other every other second and of course uh, many many part of the world is doing the same everybody have to draw their own cartel everybody's trying to their own friend i don't want to do too much time on this i uh, just want to one point i want to, want to actually mention to you this you china and you in and us rivalry now there are apparently f-35 a f-35 b f-35 c which is the the one on the pic on the picture i show you is f-35 c the world got only 750 pieces of this and apparently 40 percent of them is buying pacific ocean what are they trying to do you do not make that many places to park your park your fighter you can only have Okinawa, you only have Honolulu. I don't know, know if Philippines that you park. I don't know how many you can park in Korea. Malaysia, you cannot come. Singapore don't allow you. India cannot park. Where do you want to go? So apparently they have been surrounding there, sort of giving China warning. You see, I got the most advanced weapon here. You touch Taiwan, I will hammer you. We do not know. So therefore, apparently they are also preparing to, to war, not only Ukraine and Russia. The others, I just don't need to mention, there are so many of them. The world is actually in conflict every other way. What did the ancient prediction say? Let me show you. This is, I was mentioning to you about the pushback prediction. This was written in the Tang Dynasty, where the emperor summoned two of his best uh, fortune teller to say, can you all write a book? of a, what is the future of Tang Dynasty. He wanted to know whether his 20, 20,000 generation later will still having Tang Dynasty. Actually, the, this, this uh, fortune teller don't want to tell him to say, you know, this two far thing are very difficult to tell. He said, no, you all are very good. You are you all right calendar. So you got to do something. So they were forced to write. So they wrote this. They wrote a book called The Pushback. Using 60 uh, SR, we call it the stem and root in Chinese. And with that, they also link with that uh, 64 kua, or we call it hexagram. With that, they also draw a picture. In this picture, the first picture, they drew two circles, double line circle, one red and one white. And then have two poem. One poem is a, like a soothsayer saying, uh, predicting the future, and another poem describing the event of the future on that particular period. And this is what happened. He, the, first, the first one he mentioned about the world begin uh, just like uh, as, as Adam and Eve starting out the world. And the second picture that he, he drew there was a plate of, um, what do you call that? Um, hair. What's it? A plum, sorry, a, a, a plate of plum, which a total of 18 plums. Because the, the poem say two nine plums. Two nine, two times nine is 18. Out of the 18 plums, you can actually count 18 plums. One, two, three, four. The fourth plum don't have a stock. The others all with a stock. What was he trying to indicate? He indicated that the fourth emperor is actually not a man, it's a lady. With that, he don't ever stop. Just he don't ever stop. And true enough, Empress Wu Zetian was the number fourth emperor of the Tang Dynasty. And went on, he went on, went on. And I can actually, I can actually show you all the sixty-four or sixty given time. Like if you, if you come to my house, but anyway, on the on the forty-six, forty-seven, he was mentioned something else. So the question I was asking is, could there be a war in twenty twenty-two and twenty twenty-three? Let's see. On page 44, there was two persons, one seated, one sitting, another one facing him. The one facing him seems to be standing in the lower, on his lower ground, and he has got a bow without arrow on his back. The poem here says that the sky was very bright, the world was very, 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 very fine, and he's talking about birds with uh, wings. China, over this 
so many thousand years, we do not have an emperor has got wings. This guy with wings, the only guy, Xi Jinping, the, the, the surname is two wings. So could they, could these two gentlemen was referring to Xi Jinping, but the one standing in front of him, having a bow with an arrow. What does the bow mean? Because Li Keqiang, the name is with a bow. It, it, it sounds something to you, if you know Chinese history, recent, recent history. And he's talking about that there seem to be some people coming to attack them and they are going to handle them. Let's see the next one. On the 45, he shows the two person holding two spear pointing towards the sun. Where does the sun come from? The sun comes from the east. So he's talking about the east coming from the west. Why is the sun pointing towards the sun? The sun normally comes from the east. Now. Why is it pointing to the west sun? Yeah. And he said, this, the, the, this uh, visitor from the west actually entered from the east. And then he mentioned wood, fire, metal, water. Chinese has got five elements. He missed one element. Where is earth? Mind you, China always considered them Middle Earth. Zhong Tu. China is the Middle Earth. So therefore, he's referring that these guests coming from the coming from the West and entering from the East, entering China because it's Earth. And China then handled this and he washed, he cleansed his shame for a long, long time, once and for all. He's referring to where the West have jointly eight countries, including Japan, attacked China during the Qing Dynasty. And it's a shame to China that they got to rent out Hong Kong for a hundred years. And they got to sub be subdued and they pay heavy, heavily for a long, long, long time until Second World War. And now this person with the wings and the person with the arrow, uh, with a bow, will be able to cleanse their shameful history. Now, what, what is he trying to say? I don't know. But he's indicating that there is an attack from well, the Western people, attack from the East, and they finally went into war. Let me we come back to this later. So 2024 is totally different because the trigram 9 went to the middle. Anytime the trigram, the trigram here denotes is hot, fire. So therefore, for the next 20 years, 2020, 20, 24, for 20 years, the weather is going to be hot, hot and therefore we are still in the midst of war because weapon is fire. The tree on the right in the middle of the tree, that only denotes Malaysia. We cover Malaysia shortly later. So therefore, 2024, 20, the square lines have got 16 characters. What did he say? This is a 16 character he mentioned. They say, the story relates events during the Han Dynasty. There was a big war and was fought whereby the country over a period of time had been under threat by the neighboring barbarians, which are Mongolians. The Hans cannot take it anymore, decided to take an initial stand by sending army via the North Chick Gate to attack first. The bloody war was fought. And the Western Passage was at Pingchen is the western part of Pingchen, and the, there was ambush and was surrounded there for seven days without food. They almost died and they almost vanished, being wiped out. The event indicated bloody war took place. The detail may not be identical, but something of a great war, a, a very bloody war is fought and it's in, involving people from the west coming from the east. Well, the, the, the conclusion. You have got to decide. Anyway, let's go on. So therefore, we go into the yearly trigram and see what happened. 2021 is north, 2022 is west, 2023 is east, 2024 is fire, 2025 is fire, 2026 is fire, 2027 is fire. So therefore, we have a continuous of burning, burning. What happened? Okay. From this figure nine in the middle, as a result of the world, as a result, the world new pegging order it takes shape, it took shape. And after three years of natural disaster, so therefore the fire is going to last for three years. 
original power in US, Russia, UK, Germany, one or we possibly we take the lead, but the, but the change will take place. So the country like India, Japan, Indonesia, so all the other countries will be will be newcomers. We were we were never in the United Nations, so now we become a newcomer. Southeast Asia actually has got a very bright future uh, after 2024. And but here also mentioned that food supplies, energy supply, and what more that you, you can imagine. Because if everybody go on fighting, who is gonna start hunting and feed you? Now, with that, I draw a, a funny co coincidence, a coincidence of, of prediction. Is it just coincidence? Eh? Chaoqing on the warring state talking about war. The pushback talking about war. Number nine enter center for 20 years talking about fire. The weather forecast telling us the weather is not conducive. It's become very erratic. We're supposed to rain, it don't rain, supposed to be hot, it's not hot. So that was from 2022, 2023. My question is, could it be war? A bloody war, not just Ukraine, it could be in China or uh, Japan or Taiwan. Why coincidence of prediction in the 12 line prediction? Okay, let's end it there. Let's look into Malaysia in a very, very quickly, a very short one. This is a map of Malaysia, that's where we are. A lot of people ask, want to know what, uh, what Malaysia in 2022 or 2023 for that matter. I will show you 2020, which is over. I don't want to explain. 2021 is explain something that uh, there was no, uh, it's erratic, but uh, sort of people getting very angry because the word P here is angry. So therefore, uh, there will, we are not that bad, so, so to say. About 2022, we said something else. Uh, I draw you, to show you the line of one, two, three, four, five, six, number three. Number three, I expand a little bit further. I'll show you. It says that on the third, third line, it shows that you draw a, a, a parallel about ancient history. That there is uh, emperor at that time during the warring, during the before the Chao dynasty, that this king actually conquered the ghost section, the ghost area. The ghost area in China can only refer to north. East can also refer to Northwest, and he said he took three years to solve the problem. Now, the others is the detail of the, the fight. So, with that, uh, we will draw a conclusion, draw a parallel to our 2021 uh, election, our general election, which started off, starting off with Johor Bahru, right? And then after that, it will have 20, we have 2020. 2023 maybe. So it looks like the general election is going to also be in 2022. So what happened then? From this 2022 strike it says that this whoever win the, the this coming election, uh, Johor or otherwise, or nationwide, they will not last more than three years. There will be a change after three years. But I hope I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. What if I'm right? I've been right. Uh, the previous years, many, many years, many, many general elections, I have been on the dot for everyone. But this one, I leave it to you to, to draw the conclusion. Yeah. But in 2023, it seems that it's this a family affair. I don't know what family affair they're talking about. In 2024, we will have something that, uh, something is using somebody as its name, sort of decoy and things like that. Uh, but finally, they also cannot win. Now. So therefore, 2022, 2023, 2024, you still have a three years. Are we still involved with other people's war for three years? But we could be affected. But are we involved in the war? I don't think we are involved in the war, but we are. So after Malacca state election, Johor's election 22, 2022, GE 15, 2022, or maybe 2023, most unlikely, unless emergency. So the answer is in your hand, ladies and gentlemen, to decide. Why? Because you hold the votes. Who do you want to vote? I don't know. So you decide what do you want Malaysia to be. But I want to show you something very interesting. How much debt do you think we are owing? 
In 2021, our revenue is 227 billion. Our expenditure is 330.6 billion. But the debt, according to Najib, he published the other day, say our foreign debt is now 1.002.9 trillion. If you take 1.002 trillion divided by 32.45 million, then every one of us, including today's newborn baby, everyone owe $30,816.64 at birth. From the very, very moment you're born, you owe so much. You pay slowly, huh? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the answer for Malaysia's future is in your hand. You know better. Yes, from here. I thank you very much. I will then take a five minutes break. I will then go into uh, part two, where uh, introduction of environmentology for you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Master David. Let's give Master David a few minutes break, uh, have a drink of water. There's so much uh, that he shared with us and uh, we'll continue in a few minutes. Gerard? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll start again in a few minutes. Meanwhile, uh, let me just uh, share some interesting information for you.
โอเคโอเค I'm sure you, all of you have already received the write up from Dato and from my student on my CV so I don't need to don't want to introduce any further to the flooding with that that goes straight into the scientific approach of four steps of environmentology originally the word was used as in Sui and they started somewhere in AD 620 which is 1000 500 years ago. Uh, of course, Hongzhi was much earlier than that, but the, oh, the first person who wrote a proper text of Feng Shui was by a person called Guo Bu in the year, he was born in the year AD 618, immediately after the Three Kingdom, Cao Cao's period. The only person who wrote the book with, with observation and examples and taking a scientific approach without mentioning a word of ghost or God for the first time ever. And also first time never ever anybody wrote anything like him subsequent. But of course, over the years, you must remember when we want to criticize anybody, we must understand their point of view at their point of time. In, during his time, immediately after that, for the next few hundred years, Chinese illiterate was 95 to 98 percent. So people don't know how to read. The only people who are scholars are working for the emperor. And emperor keeps his feng shui stuff in his bedroom, he don't share. And Anna, the little bit of news that leak up to the, to the public, and they learn by heart. A lot of them just know a little bit, Cantonese say, so Anna, he went into different, different hands. He went into the Taoist hand, he went into the Buddhist hand, he went into the Thai hand, and so therefore it becomes so complicated that everybody claimed to be a master. And he went on and on and on until these Chinese who came to some Asia. The learner people don't even want to touch from Sui with a 10-foot pole. The people who practice feng shui are people, are the mediums, the mediums at those times are actually gangsters who cannot find a living. Then go to the temple and jump, 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 uh, to get into trance and pretend that they are very good. And he went on and on and on. And every time we hear people talk to you, we say, oh, uh, you want to ask him about feng shui? He would give you a Chinese word to say, tinke pao si lao. Out of this, familiar, right? My question is, if it's a tinke pao si lao, where is who si lao to you? Where did you get this information from? So the word Tinke Palos Love is already a bullshit to you, to lie to you and buy you away. Say, don't ask further because I don't know the answer. So I spent my whole lifetime. From young, my father, we, our family is a feng shui family. My father forced me to learn by heart all these feng shui texts. But he, he told me, he said, I don't believe Feng Shui. My father forced me to memorize it. His father forced him to memorize it. I got to force you to memorize it. But I don't believe it. Whether you do or don't do, that's up to you. But I don't want to do. And of course, I was dead against all this. The first 20 years of my life, I went all the way out to prove Feng Shui was hocus focus. That was my job. I was not there to promote. I was there to against. But the more I go against it, the more he honed onto me. And slowly and slowly, I got convinced. And from then on, I went to the research to say, if it is true, I want to find a scientific way of doing it. I don't want to go on this focus, focus. And since then, I embarked my journey on the scientific approach. Not all that we're doing, we can explain in science, of course. But I would that probably say 60, 70% I can explain in science. Those of you cannot, we say, leave it aside first until we can find the answer. I will show you. First, I want to put my stand very clear. What is to me not feng shui? These are not feng shui. 
If you see anybody's house hanging anything of this, these are not feng shui. Feng shui, Kuo Fu never mentioned a word about this. He was never promoted to promote this. If the tiger picture can give you good luck, your grandfather's picture can do the same thing. If it's a frog can give you good luck, you can buy a body load of frog. It's very cheap. Yeah. If you can, the bell can give you good luck. All the temples are already good luck already. They bell their, their temple every day, every night. Of course, in Malaysia, we also have a practitioner who, uh, who promotes to hang suits all over the place. I mean, to me, I mean, I think you too don't think this is uh, anything of, to do with Feng Shui. So anytime you come across this, they are not. And these are also not Feng Shui. These are relig religious practices and cultural practices. New Year is a cultural practice. It's not Feng Shui. Yeah, people in front of the shop put the cat uh, waving at you, waving at you. This is actually imported from Tha Thailand. Uh, nothing to do with us. Yeah. So therefore, all these uh, cultural practices and more so cultural practices differ from province to province, differ from town to town, differ from dialect to dialect. The Hokkien province, uh, uh, cultural, Teochew culture, Cantonese culture, all different. You know, the cute thing, people in Sichuan put up their crab shell to hang in front of their door. Do you know why? Because they, they have not seen sea crab. Land crab, they have seen sea crab, they never see, they have never seen crab that size. So it's something very rare. So that must be good luck. So these people sell to them, bullshit them, and say, you see this crab is very rare, right? You better put it in front of your house, you will bring you good luck. So they put the crab in front of the house. So the same thing happened to a lot of us all the time. So later on, if they're QA, anything to do with culture, anything with religion, I will not answer. Because it's not nothing to do with environmentology. It's not even with Feng Shui to start with. Okay. These are not, yeah? Okay. What is scientific approach? Scientific approach is such that first we got to do observation. Repeatedly keeping observe something. The same thing happened again and again, and we start keeping record and with repeated observation with a repeated result, then we keep that as a record to prove. Then from then now you can form a hypothesis. That oh, if this, this, this happened, this, this will happen, and how long you take place, things like that. You record this, and then you can form into a hypothesis of observation and proofs. From then, if it's still correct, then you can form this into a rule or theory or theory of proof. And this theory of proof can be if it can be practiced and give it still bear you the same result. From here, we can slowly introduce it as a scientific confirmation. Someone say, oh, scientific confirmation is only to do with, it can be proved with numbers, mathematics. That is not true. Scientific confirmation doesn't mean must have mathematics. Yes, a lot of them can, but not all. Intrinsic you know, taste, intrinsic thinking, intrinsic behavior, are all science also. Which one can you measure? A lot of them we still cannot. And for a long, long time, we still cannot. But we cannot deny that they are actually scientific research or actually scientific subject already. Okay, let us now talk about what is environmentology. Environmentology divided into basically two parts. One is macro, which is external, and covers this. It covers mountain, landform, rivers, and roads. Uh, electric, electric and other man-made forces and filing and in con construction structures and other uh, structure substructures. These are external and we classify them in environmentology as macro. That means it affects everybody, not individuals. Then the other one is micro. Micro here, we're talking about door, door entrances, in external door and internal door, we're talking about space utilization uh, from the whole house to different rooms to, 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 to kitchens and things like that. And then if once you talk about space utilization, you've got to consider the golden rule, proportion application. And then, of course, you've got to watch out for corners and, and edges because it's dangerous, it harm people. And now you've got to consider the height and the clearance of a, of a space because golden rule proportion must Consider this so that the forces or the air or the wind within the space can flow uh, uh, 
in 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 a very in a, a very living manner. And of course, we we consider the exit and the back door because, like human being, you cannot keep on eating and do not do not excrete out. So, for, for a house, if you are in, in inlet, you must have an outlet. And then, of course, to do that, for to build a house, you must even well, just single story. You must have beams. You must have you must have pillars. All these got to be considered. Even car park, you got to consider pillars. So that we will talk about it one by one. So environmentology, the Chinese word called Huan Jing Ren Wen Sheng Tai Xue. This one, this word and these classes were con started in Jiao Tong University in Shanghai, and I coined the word, both English and Chinese. And then from then on, earlier than that, actually I already uh, written down, uh, written the, the the details of how to how to con how to conduct this business, because ancient time, even until today, there is nobody to tell you how do you step by step can conduct this uh, environmentology or feng shui practice. People come with drips and drips. Oh, you put a frog there, you put a fish tank there, you do this, you do that. But how do we start? Where do we start? There must be a pattern. You cannot say, oh, for you, I start with the door. For him, I stay with the bed. But no, you got to go step by step. So therefore, I divided the step into simple four steps. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you learn these four steps, if you learn it in, in great depth, you can become Feng Shui Master. But if you learn it just, just very, very shallow, you can also do it for your own house and do it for your own relatives. And help do them a favor. I don't mind if, if they want to pay you money. Anyway, so listen carefully, learn carefully. These four steps will help you, help your life, if not just for yourself, for your neighbors, for your friends. Okay, let's start one by one. One by one, one, one. The four steps are identification, selection, matching, and energizing. It's this own title. Let's go step by step. First, identification. What is identification? People born at different times and different places varies in character and behaviors. You agree? If you're born in India, you behave differently, right? If you're born in Africa, you're different, right? If you're born in America, you're different, right? So, so are buildings. Building and space, is, we have, there also did no two buildings that are identically the same. Yeah, because why? Because the people who live in it are not the same. You cannot live in two different houses identically and live similar. Cannot. So therefore, they differ. So first, we can identify. We identify the building. We identify the people. So identify. first, we got to identify the subject. If we're not doing for human being, man, if we're doing for dogs, then it's different. You can identify the dog. But now, but identify the subject, the human being. So question one is, who are you? You everybody have identification. At least you hold an IC. Before that, you hold a bursa. Then we know, oh, this person, Ati or Akka or Ama or Abu, actually born but when. Then after that, people recognize you by that. I don't behave like the Jackie Chan to go to Africa, don't know who, who are you. Okay, so how do we identify a person? Now we have identity card, but how do we actually technically, scientifically identify a person? We can only identify a person from the day, the time of birth. Now, which day, which time of birth can we refer to? Now, luckily, we have the earth and the sun. The earth and the sun tell us that our year normally starts in winter solstice. Why? Because the earth, the way it tilts somehow or rather in November, in December 22nd, 21st, 22nd, is at the southernmost part. From that day onward, he slightly tilt, tilt the other way around and go to the summer. So that is the demarcation line of the day. And at least the, the sun and the earth will stay there for a split of second. But the other places, they won't stay too long. That's the longest they can stay. If anybody disagrees to this, then we don't continue it. We don't continue the talk. Because Western Eastern calendar count winter solstice as the beginning of the day at least for the Northern Hemisphere. For the Southern Hemisphere, it's a totally different story. Why? Because we are writing the calendar for the Southerner. The Southerners, our winter solstice is a summer solstice. So a lot of 
this so called Fungsi Master went to Australia, New Zealand, and they, they met their Waterloo. It doesn't work because it is different. The calendar is also different. So that is a point that we must first agree scientifically that the beginning of the year for all of us in the Northern Hemisphere, the beginning of the year is winter solstice zero, 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 zero hours. Agree. Then I, we draw a chart of 100 years of every year, what that year belongs to a, a marking. Because once you say the year, it means the solstice beginning, so everybody must have an identification to identify who you are. And this is how we do it. Too small, is that you can't see, right? I'll give you a bigger one. Can you see now? Yeah. So therefore, for example, you are born in 1945. Then the winter solstice is at 22 December 1944, 750 hours. Yeah. And from that, for example, then the person, if it's a male, is considered number one. Or in binary term, it's a zero, one, zero. For a girl, it has become a zero, zero, zero. Or we call it number eight. Actually, originally, it's number five. But anyway, the technical part will come later. So therefore, from that one, the number, the, 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 the male, the number will go backward. The female, the number will go forward. So you have five, six, seven, eight, nine. The other one is one, nine, eight, seven, six. So it went on like that. Uh, but there is a formula to calculate this. Uh, today, I'm not going to teach you the formula. But if you attend the class, I, I give you free. Uh, this one, you've got to memorize. What year are you born? From that year, you're going to memorize. Go forward, you are going to go backward. That's all. Yeah? And I give you every chart of here. Ninety-three and so on. That's the others you can calculate. Then from then on, we got to know our northeast southwest. I mean, if we cannot know our northeast southwest, you, you don't know where you stand and where you're going. So that is important. So that if you if you want to have a, have a look at your house, you must know where your house is north east southwest. Huh? Uh, but somehow or other in Malaysia, I find it very funny. A lot of people still don't know how to hold a compass and look. I'm not talking about Pongsi compass, just ordinary compass. We will go through that step by step. Yeah. So from here, we know a person under what, num what number, what, bin what, what trigram, a binary trigram, and then we'll be able to, you will want to know whether what is the section or what is a, a sector or what is a direction that is harmony to him, is wealthy to him, or is health to him, or is advancement to him. And then there are four other sectors are not, not as con conducive. So therefore, you need to only remember the four sectors of four areas that are conducive to you, the others are not. We come to that. Then from that, we draw this. Eh? We draw a circle, uh, like a compass, and then we divide them into eight sectors. For example, if you happen to be a 0, 1, 0 trigram, your good sectors are north, east, south, east, and south. But after knowing that, you know, which sector has got, uh, will bring you other results, other effects. For example, if the north will give you advancement, the east will give you health, southeast will give you wealth, and the south will give you harmony. Ditto. To other trigram. Now, in this other different trigram, will give you different results, different sector. And these other, just now that one we considered as a, West group and the, the uh, east group is considered the west group, né? all the west side. To do this, you got to know your north and south west, of course. Huh? Yeah. That's identification. After identification, in we, during in the identification stage, you want to know now you want to buy a house, you want to start looking at the door. Now, whose who's date of birth should I follow? A lot of questions with us on this. Some say, okay, both are uh, two persons. Uh, how can you, you two person, then the husband, the only two dollars? Not necessarily the two person are born in the same year. No, that's not the same. Yeah? There is 
uh, West Chinese say so, a Western say the same. Men takes the external, ladies take the internal. External means from the main door outward, from the main, main door to outside, to the garden, if you use a man's date of birth, year of birth. Inside the house, from the, from, the, from the living room, to the kitchen, to the bedroom, you got to take the ladies' date of birth to measure. There are people say, why is it so scientific about this? Why can't the girl take the, take the external? Okay, let me, let me tell you the difference here is you divide a person into yin and yang. In Chinese term, yang, man is considered yang, lady is considered yin. In yang term, in, 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 in physics term, yang is actually considered non-body. Non-physical body is only, for, only force. Yin is considered body, which also has the force. So the body is yin, man is considered yang. With the force, you can't see its physical form. There is man. So the door, we're talking about the entrance, there is no physical, it's only the door only. The kitchen and the bedroom and all this has got physical form. So the house is physical form. So the physical form belongs to the lady. Only the door and the garden belongs to the man. You don't agree with this? Let's go, go and check physics about positive, the uh, positive and negative sort of uh, forces. Which one is force? Which one is form? So we divide them into form and force. After that being done, we then go for step two. Because you now want to match the house to the husband or to match the house to the wife. So with the selection. And to match that, to find a house, you must first find the location. Where do you want to find a house? Where, whether the house is in the sea or in the river or on the mountain. That is the location. Which location will give you more benefit or give you a better, better result in your life? Whether up in the hill or on the valley. Let's go to, go to that and check. Is there anyone also know and know and why to select a good environment and location to dwell, to do or to die? Human beings can or not? Yeah. Sometimes human beings that they know everything, so never mind. I got money, I buy a bungalow, I buy a bungalow, never mind where it is. And how many people poke in a bungalow? We talk to that next time. So in this type two on the selection, we're talking about location. There's two types. One location is on macro in the, in the big picture, or micro in a single house. Let's go through that. This is in, I will mention about the, the mac, mac, macro where the external. And then in landform, earth forces are barricaded by water. Do we agree or we don't agree? Oh, okay. Earth forces are dedicated by water, like river, river flowing water. So therefore the earth forces, I mean, you reach a river, you cannot go through. Then it bounces back. Like your, your earth forces reach the sea, when it, it will not go through because in the sea is a different element. So forces go to will transfer from rigidity to rigidity. When forces go to void, it will not go through. Like you sit in the plane, there's two transparent glass there. This actually, he barricade the force from outside to inside, inside to outside. They even barricade the sun. So land forms should cause wind, could conserve wind flow, and in geological term, we use the term P wave or S wave. Actually, P wave and S wave is normally used by seismic people on earthquake. But because earthquake, you see the force, it comes in, 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 in speed and in force. But on static form of land, you possibly don't see. Don't see doesn't need me move, don't move. Any mess, if it is on high, you will then press downward and it pro, pro, go sideways. The, the, the force is still there. So we do not have a technical term for that. So we borrow uh, earthquake seismic term to use, P wave and S wave. P is primary wave, S is secondary wave. Primary wave may go through river, but secondary wave cannot, it will bounce back. As a result, this is what, what it forms onto a mountain on the landform. And if it is rocks like this, it will go more di directly vertical downward than go sideways. And if it is uh, many, many forces together, it will form and meander into a movement like this, which is not, it's very common if you go to Cameron Highland or Gunting Highland, you see a lot of this sort of formation.
Now, if you go to the desert, you see this because the, the natural movement of the of the wind after blowing through the desert, it will give sand dunes in this manner. God give you the same thing. Our body, where is where are our force? You got ten fingers. Which are the two fingers are the strongest? It's between your thumb and uh, and your index. Yes, and we always uh, explain to people. If you want to know uh, which part of the because most of the time mountains has got there's no mountain uh, two arms the same length one arm is always shorter one arm is always longer and to cut the metal short is the shorter arm is always stronger one okay then we'll go to then we want to look at river rivers meanders meanders one side which is embracing sensitive posoid the other side on the elbow we call it deflecting but in between there Water will have some funny, funny movement. A lot of us uh, never noticed. Them. Let me show you this. This is how the water meander. There's no natural river go a straight line. Any straight river are man-made. Your longkang in the back of the house, your monsoon drain in the on the road. These are man-made, and they are not conducive. We I can explain this. Give me time, but today we are leaving. In the time, I would rush uh, on this topic. So, as a river flow, you, as you change direction at the middle of it, you will blast, blast, and it burst, and the, the water change direction. Why? Because water, like any other forces or energy, moves in in a vortex manner. What are the vortex manner? They go into the orbital motion. You go into rotational motion, into the, into a circulate. Circulational motion. These three motions combined together, we call it a vortex. And all forces move in a vortex manner, includes liquid water. If you open your uh, house, uh, tight pipe water, and see the downpipe, you put a full uh, full pipe by full full tank and let it flow through the downpipe. Look from the top, you will see that it swirl like a like a tornado or like a whirlpool in the, in the sea. Human being, the same thing. You got all your meridian line, and all your meridian line, the forces moves in a vortex, moves in vortex manner. This is what landform, natural landform will be. Yeah. So the term used was that living force, living forces move in vortex manner, dead forces move in straight line, like this. When the thing is, when the snake is dead, that's how it behaves. And we also know that town prospers with roads, city flourish with rivers. You remember Tanjung Malim? Yeah, long, long ago before how it was done, that town was on the way to Ipoh was a most, most busy town. But after when the road is not used, it's dead. Okay. So here we talk about location. In this location, we I can I'm going to show you some example in macro, and I'm going to share with you some. From my experience, I will do it quickly because we have very limited time. Okay. Next, if you want to want me to continue continue this, let's have another appointment. I'm going to create detail with you. These are the towns in the world. Or the dot 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 or the white dot. Yeah. All the white dots are the towns in the world. And I will draw you to explain to you that the world is like that. Geology is like that. Uh, Put it in the very Chinese term. He said, two mountains, there must be a river. Two rivers, there must be a mountain. Of course. Right? I mean, this is basic, basic geology, ma, right? If there's two mountains, the water will flow in, in, into the valley. If there's if there's the, the two rivers in the middle, there must be a piece of high land. Now else is a swamp. So therefore, this is what happened. And then because of this, we start using P way and safe way to uh, S way to explain further. So this is okay. I give this, I pick, I actually pick 10 major cities in the world to explain to you what I was just mentioned. You see, for example, Bangkok. Bangkok is one of the top 10 cities in the world. It is in front of Bangkok, there is a river called Chao Praya River. Chao Praya River, somehow you look at the map, you see the population, the the, the people dwelling pattern, they all stay on the eastern side of Chapraya. The western side, the, the it's not even 10% of the other of Bangkok, eastern part of Bangkok. Why? 
because the river embraces the, the forces. So the forces, forces from the east, from the eastern side, push. It keep on pushing, pushing, pushing until the river, the P wave went through. The secondary wave did not go through. It bounces back and it, it accumulates, form as a homogeneous earth forces in the ground. So therefore, because, people stay there because that's a place they make, make living and they find it comfortable. They make a lot of money. They, they stay there. They bring their relative, they are bringing the people in. But the other side, somehow they try, but they did not do that well. So lesser people go. So they accumulate in the natural human habitat manner. Similarly, it goes to Shanghai Huangpu River. Similarly, it goes to Han River in Korea. Similarly, it goes to Manhattan. Manhattan was the only island. That to go to one side of the island to the other side of the island, they take a long distance. So they start making roads, bridges in between to link up. And these bridges and brick and, and, and bridges and, and roads actually brought the forces from the two sides and pumped into Long Island. So all Long Island become a very rich island in homogeneous land forces. The same thing Hong Kong did in Hong Kong. Hong Kong and Kowloon, before Sinsei, Sinsei Ma Tao, the tunnel was built, Kowloon was nothing. It was only uh, uh, pirates who were staying there. And, uh, and British thought they did a favor. The favor was the bridge, the tunnel from Hong Kong to Kowloon. The same thing happened in Singapore, when Singapore, Singapore, and for, uh, own, bought, uh, uh, Singapore from Jotatun to Johor, it was only a 50 family fishing village. Singapore flourished because of the streets of Johor, that bridge. Then uh, we start quarreling with Singapore, we split, and then we give him a second bridge, which is called the Toa Bridge. And then we see quarrel, 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 we are proposing to give him a crooked bridge. And these are examples worldwide. I can show you examples. Any city, any capital city in the world, they have all the same pattern. How did the energy travel? We take the center of uh, Mount Everest as a, as a point. The energy also starts from there. Mm, all right. Okay. Just to give you, give you an example of the forces very quickly. Yeah. To show you how the forces run, yeah, the forces run from Himalaya to China to India to Southeast Asia. He, he ends at his most of Kra, he sinks in and he rises again. He rises again into Peninsular Malaya. Yes, this is how he goes into the eight branches of our Peninsular Malaya's uh, eight branches, and finally he break off in somewhere in between Genting and KL, and it formed into, it formed into Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur is actually, where am I? I cannot see the picture already. This is good. This is good. Huh? No, I want the other one. They want the Kuala Lumpur. Where we are now? This is Kuala Lumpur. No, no, no. Next, ah, next time. Okay. Yeah. This is Kuala Lumpur, and the energy formed into a two embracing arm into Kuala Lumpur Territory and Kuala Lumpur. And they form another arm into Putrajaya. You are in one of them. And of course, to show you some example, for example, uh, uh, what is that? The, the Mid Valley. Mid Valley is embraced by one side with the Klang, Klang River, on the other side with Loni Road, and it formed into an oyster. And the energy is very, very tightly uh, held within that. And of course, you get another example of pavilion, which having a larger chulan embracing it at the back. You got a, from, from Bukinanas and from Puruje, the mountain, the energy comes down. Uh, coincidentally, this project was my project. And of course, we get many, many, many other examples of, of how the wind, how the wind flow over a mountain, how the wind flow after the high building. We all these are detectable, and we can give you the result of what will happen if you live there like that. And this is, this is, if this is not science, what else is? I don't know. So mountain, we got to understand where it begins and where it ends. River also, river course also, we must know where it begins and where it goes. Then, therefore, we can measure, we can trace, we can track. 
So Kuala Lumpur, Malaysian Times, and other cities, I have written about this. In 2007, August 13, first article in Star, until article 282 in 2013, March 15. Uh, it was penned by my student, Stephen Chin. Okay. Then we quickly go into step three, matching. Once you have got the, the right house, you got the right, right land, right house, then you want to know where this person, which house you must own. So therefore, the first thing we got to know, just now we already know the element. Now from here, we've got the third step into the micro observation of human factor. The human factor, normally we got to have a lot, a lot of things to consider, but today, to cut it very short, we only consider three, three main, main door, master bedroom, and kitchen. The others are explained sometime later. But once they enter a house, like, like we talk about human layer, we must be able to identify where we are. You got to take, take a point of reference. Where is a point of reference? To know where it's not the southwest, the center of the house, the, the, the cross that I've crossed, center of the house, to find the point of reference. With the point of reference, you will then identify where is the entrance door. Yeah. And of course, to get a point of reference, to get a center point also, you need some training, uh, or else you do not know uh, where to get a center. And then, okay, the ancient, ancient design, they always think, consider the main entrance is a front. But modern design, the building face the road, the main, main entrance may not be in the front. So these are some variations that we need to know. So where, why the main entrance? Main entrance is the point of where you, you and the family enter and come out. So it's in and out. If the house, got nobody stay, the house gets deteriorated very, very quickly. Yeah. So I, I give you an example like this as a, uh, getting the tomato ketchup from the bottle. Uh, because if it's a full bottle, you can't get it out. Uh, only the Chinese can because you use chopsticks. You can't use your, your, your fork and spoon to take out the, take out the, the, the ketchup. So looking into the house, you got to know the length, you got to know the width, you got to know the... You, you got to know the height. This is what required of a space. You want to know the space is conducive for people to say you got to do that with a golden rule proportion design. Okay. Not only we need golden rule, the plant, the leaves, the apples, the fruits, the human being, the horses, the animals, everyone to survive. To survive, you need golden rule design. A lady who, is, who has a body proportion do not fit in the golden rule design are very ugly. Either they're too fat or they're too thin. Men are the same. So to be fit into, to, to comply into golden rule design, you need this. Okay. So this is the measurement of a golden rule design. If you take it from Fibonacci theory, it is exactly the same. It's 0 0.061818 or 1.61818. For Chinese, the I Ching number tells you that it's 34 divided by 57, uh, by 55. So the answer is 1.61818181818 to eternity. So why we come from the front entrance? Look at one entrance is where you enter, where they come out. You don't come through chimney, you don't come through window. So in that, you got to be able to identify the meridian line, the life line, the energy line, the house measurement, the proportion to the door, and the measurement to suit this particular proportion, how the meridian works. Actually, I, I want to tell you some example and story, but I think I have very limited time. I just show you one building somewhere in the end of Jalan Ampang, which I designed. It's a charity house. It's like a vase. Two thirds of the vase is on land. One third of the vase is underground. And the length and the width and the, and the height are all golden rule proportion. If we stand on the stage and give a talk, in, even in front, in, in the door, which is 40 feet away, you can hear clearly without a mic. And this is how you, you are supposed to be able to do a meridian line. Anything that the length is bigger, than, longer than 1.618, it fails meridian. If the width is fail, fail less than 0.618, it also fails. If the height fails 0.618, it also fails the golden rule proportion. Uh, I have teach this in pen. I do not know if they follow. But sometimes, even if they follow the Developer don't follow because they say, I want 20 units. You give it 18, not good enough. If you don't want, I get another architect. Anyway, so this is 
Not only you can do it on a normal terrace houses, you can also do it on condos. You can also do it on apartments. And this is how you find the center of the, uh, the center of uh, find the north east southwest and then get a proportion and then do it. With the golden rule proportion and with the right door, you will then reach a, a position where you spend this stay in harmony and you can make great wealth and you can also enjoy great health and you can also enjoy great invest and advancement, failing which you, you shall not. Let me show you one or two examples of a non-conducive building. Those under high tension cable are not conducive. TNB have already designed that. Anything below the, 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 the high tension cable and, and 150 feet away from, from the center to both sides, you are not supposed to build houses. It belongs to TNB. But Malaysia, we are technical know who, you can then break the law and build underneath. And whoever built underneath, all go into big problems. And these are houses that built on stilt across the road. And this house that I've, I've done it, then finally they vacate it because the family, one, some family member died. So they vacate and the house wasn't sold and it became a haunted house. Well, there are many, many details that we have got to take care. If you attend a class, you understand. But today, you learn enough of this, you go back and do a house. But the final step, which will not be taught today, it will be taught only if you join the class, is the step of energizing. Nobody in this world, if, whether from or otherwise, have this energizing step. Why? Because after you claim you're so good, so good, you can do so much, so much. Prove to me. Show me. Can anybody show? You're sincerely and our students can. We show you how. When the house is completed, you wanted to shift in, pick a right date, year, month, date, time, right time, timing, then you shift in, and with a certain procedure has got to, to, be, meant to be done. Immediately after the procedure, within 24 hours in advance, we tell you what you are going to see, what they're going to meet, what are the phenomena you will encounter within the next 24 hours. If it doesn't work, we return you the money. But if we work, then it proves that our scientific proof of environmentology is working. So therefore, go, go back to the original story of our scientific approach. We are not claiming everything as a sign, but we say the approach we take is scientific. We are, we are keeping records of repeated observation. We have of, of the hypothesis of observation and proofs. We have rules and theory of proofs. And then we only after that, we will think, claim and possibly apply for scientific confirmation. I want to name, name a few characters to you. In China, there's a guy called Luo Xia Hong, born in BC 156 to BC 87. He's the first person who has written a proper calendar. He's a person who, without a calculator, calculated 5, 23.1 or 22 divided by 7. First person. Yeah? And he was he actually counted, he actually plot, counted the stars in the sky. And today, his name is packed in, behind the moon in a little hole. How unfair NASA, uh, the, world, uh, the world astronomy is doing to him. He's the first person to do this. And you give him a small hole behind the moon to put his name. Anyway, he wrote the Taichu calendar. He invented the first astrolab. He calculated 3.1. 1412 without using the word pi and without using calculator, without even using a big a big manually calculate. And another person, I want you to know, is called Kuo Pu, the first person in China who wrote a feng shui book using observation and proofs. And he's born in 276324 in the Qin Dynasty. And his, his feng shui text record is a record of observation and effect on feng shui. So of course. You must understand those days, the word science did not, did not emerge yet. And people, then those days, 95% were illiterate. So it was all controlled by the, by the emperor. The emperor said, no, you shall talk to nobody. I'm the only one you talk to. And that's why it, it did that. But uh, luckily today, uh, I, we are a bit lucky we have, we have the free hand. But another person you need to know, Galileo Galilei was born in 1636, thousand years after all these two gentlemen. Yeah. He was the first person who was supposed to be commonly referred to as Galileo, was an Italian astronomer, a physicist, an engineer, sometimes described as a polymath. 
from the city of Pisa. Okay, he invented all these, the father of observational astronomy, modern physics, scientific method, and modern science. What happened? He said, he claimed that the sun is the center of, of, of our universe and not the earth. Before that, everybody said the earth is the center. So therefore, the church don't believe him and call him, force him to recant. He spent the rest of his life in a house arrest and he died. And not only many, many, many years later, they recognized that he was correct. But what happened? Because those days, if he was to have lived today, possibly a lot of people still think he's hocus pocus. So to have science, scientific proof, we need scientific thinking people to help, and we need time. It's easy to criticize and make fun, but, but present negative-minded people. They do not contribute. Adopt scientific theory proof may take many generations and concerted effort. Like medicine, from a voodoo to modern medicine, like astrology to astronomy, even even subject become scientific, there's still a small number of hocus pocus medicine men, hocus pocus astrologer who around, but lucky thing, this scientific subject has now become mainstream of science and has yet been developed. But you cannot, you cannot rule out those hocus pocus followers. They're still jumping around and making a living, making fun of their customer. I hope, I hope sincerely, ladies and gentlemen, environmentalism can be the same. Rather than criticizing from negative preset mind, let us have and do for our future generation, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you very much from Hub University and from and Paranology Malaysia. Now give us a feedback, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know your preference. Join us in the journey. We look forward to seeing you. In help, I think we are proposing short weekend courses, two Saturdays or two Sundays. We also propose to have a three-month certificate course once a week, duration of course, depending on how many hours and how many weeks. Get in touch with help and register your register interest. With that, ladies and gentlemen, Environology Introduction, Environology Health and EM, thank you. Thank you, Raymond, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Master Ko and Gerard. This has been a very, very interesting uh, discussion on environmentology, something new that we all have learned today. And if you're interested, please get in touch with us. I've shared my contact details on the chat box. Um, once again, I would like to thank all of the people who tuned in today. I know it's a sa Saturday and most of you have a lot of things, but still we have about close to 150 people listening into this very, very interesting talk. Uh, on behalf of Help University, I'd like to say thank you to Master Go to Gerard also for helping out and to Caroline uh, at the back end, helping us with the technical matters. Have a good weekend, everybody. Stay Thank safe. you, Dato Po Chan, for informing us. Uh, it's very interesting uh, message that we can learn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fong. <laughs> Okay, so I got to be a phone bang or...